Here we are at Old North Cemetery in the north end of Hartford. It's nice after a hundred years of uh, inattention to see that this site is finally going to get a little help, a little restoration, and let's see what's uh, why it matters. Uh, Old North was opened up in 1808 after uh, the uh, original burying ground in Hartford, the first burying ground in Hartford, uh, was filled and there was no more room and so they had to expand into a section of the city that didn't have a lot of uh, population yet, it wasn't fully developed, and so therefore uh, the opportunity to do something in the way of a new burial place was uh, created, and uh, this site uh, contains many of the, f in the final resting place of many of Hartford's most uh, famous citizens, people who uh, really built this city, and uh, one of the first, right here in the first row is Mason Fitch Cogswell. He was a doctor uh, from New York, and uh, he was a uh, Pioneer. His daughter Alice, shown here, was uh, born deaf, and uh, he, through his efforts, the American School for the Deaf, which developed the American Sign Language, was uh, founded. And uh, his uh, nephew, I guess, uh, Lewis Ledyard Weld, well, led colored troops in the uh, Civil War. This is a monument uh, that uh, acknowledges that. Uh, he and his brother were uh, both uh, in saw action in the uh, Civil War, and. Uh, and, and were involved in uh, the cause of freedom and and, and uh, the America's journey of freedom. And uh, so many interesting people. Uh, Mark Twain isn't buried in Hartford, nor is Harriet Beecher Stowe, but Harriet Beecher Stowe's sister. We'll see her in a moment. Uh, she was uh, involved in the Hartford Seminary, the school that the uh, Beecher sisters, Catherine and uh, Harriet and uh, her sister Mary here uh, operated and uh, this is where Sam Colt intended to be buried. He actually designed this monument uh, about 1852 and it was the earliest use of the Colt, uh, rampant Colt that became the corporate trademark for the uh, Colt Manufacturing Company. Colt's uh, father, John, uh, uh, excuse me, grandfather John Caldwell is buried here and uh, some of his brothers and uh, as we travel around you see so many interesting things. This is actually Sam Colt's own brother, uh, James Colt. And, uh, and here, this is interesting, uh, we mentioned the American School for the Deaf. Nathaniel Terry was a member of Congress and he was um, led, uh, 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 initiated the uh, legislation that uh, created the American School for the, the Deaf. He was in the 14th Congress. He was also the mayor of Hartford. And his wife, Catherine Wadsworth, look at this big monument that, that uh, marks her grave out of uh, Glastonbury granite. And her uh, brother, Daniel Wadsworth, the founder of the Wadsworth Athenaeum, actually commissioned this monument. Uh, and, uh, and he also is buried here, as we will see in a moment. Uh, thousands of burials and really every uh, uh, race, religion, people from all kinds of backgrounds are buried here in Old North and uh, you know it's uh, actually the largest concentration of veterans of the uh, African-American veterans of the Civil War uh, I, I can see we'll see some of their monuments in a moment or little tablets and uh, I can see that they're doing some landscaping t uh, 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 cutting down some of the old trees here I ho hope they won't uh, homogenize it to such a degree that we don't recognize it anymore this is a shame this is uh, the Civil War member of the colored uh, troops 29th regiment this has uh, been knocked down and needs to be set back up uh, some of the restoration work that is uh, under un underway is important but uh, the most important thing that could be done here is to repair just little monuments, tablets like this, different situations. Uh, there are probably, well, 75 years of deferred maintenance here. Lots of projects that could be done to improve the conditions and appearance of this very historic site. And uh, as I say, we travel around. This is an example of the uh, monumental bronze, white, zinc, the monumental bronze work out of uh, Bridgeport that was uh, uh, created there. And um, we'll also see here, these are stones marking the grave of uh, David Watkinson and uh, 
He was um, he was the founder of the Watkinson Library. He was a merchant, and actually, this uh, monument is fascinating because it was it's actually signed by this fella, Thomas Adams, uh, who was uh, you can't really make out the name too well there, but uh, he was a monument maker, one of two in the north end of Hartford. So this area really became famous for uh, not only monuments, but uh, the artistic achievements of the monument makers. And we'll just look at a couple more here. Again, if you look in the back, you'll see that there's been some quite a bit of damage and a certain amount of vandalism, but uh, hopefully all of this will be taken care of. This is the final resting place of the Reverend Horace Bushnell. He was the most famous, one of the most famous theologians of his generation in the 19th century. He was, some people describe him as the Dr. Spock of the 19th century because he was uh, involved in, uh, you know, the whole church school movement and the idea that uh, uh, Christian nurture and how you raise children and he was, you know, kind of wrote advice books among other things. He was also an environmentalist and somebody who uh, helped uh, inspire Frederick Law Olmsted, who really became one of the key figures in the modern environmental movement. Uh, this is governor. There are many governors and mayors and political figures of great importance buried here. This is the, uh, the monument to uh, Governor William Walcott, whose father, uh, excuse me, Go Governor William Ellsworth, whose father, Oliver Ellsworth, was one of the founders and authors of the United States uh, Constitution attended the federal convention. Ellsworth himself was actually the attorney for Prudence Crandall and was the governor at the time of the Amistad incident. So he uh, really also belongs uh, in the uh, uh, pantheon of personalities we think of in connection with America's journey to freedom. Uh, this again, some of these situations here uh, look like vandalism. I don't think this was down the last time I came, so I don't quite know what's going on. But it looks like they are uh, making improvements to the the driveway and the walkway. And uh, this is the final resting place of Frederick Law Olmsted and his son, uh, uh, Fred Frederick Jr. This is the Olmsted firm, of course, that gave birth to the National Park Service, the Urban Parks Movement. Uh, and the profession of landscape design. One of the most famous uh, personalities to come out of Hartford was Frederick Law Olmsted. Uh, here is the, this is very interesting, George Brindley, who we can see here, uh, was an antiquarian. He built one of the great, great collections of rare books that uh, were assembled in the 19th century. And this wonderful sort of ecclesiastic Gothic monument that was uh, designed by the uh, New England Granite Works in Hartford. This was uh, James Batterson's firm. You can see it's signed right here. And James Batterson was the uh, also the founders of Travelers Insurance Company. But many of these mount monuments are really very interesting. Now here we see this is the last resting place of Daniel Wadsworth, the founder of the Wadsworth Athenaeum and one of the great early patrons of the arts. He was a uh, uh, a patron of Thomas Cole and was the person that arranged the apprenticeship between Frederick Church and Thomas Cole and this is his wife I always uh, get a kick out of her monument Mrs. Faith Wadsworth wife of Daniel Wadsworth but lest you forget the daughter of the second governor Trumbull which meant that she was the granddaughter of the first governor Trumbull so this was kind of a marriage of uh, elites in uh, 18th century late, late 18th and early 19th century Hartford and of course, Daniel Wadsworth did a, uh, had a major role in shaping the culture and direction of Hartford as a progressive uh, place committed to education, equal rights, uh, art, and uh, uh, cultural opportunities for all. It was, it's really an amazing city in part because there were these visionary leaders who uh, played such an important role in its development. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is a gravestone. This marks the grave of Alice Will Lawrence, shown here, uh, and she uh, was the wife of William Lawrence, and um, she died in 1842, but somebody came along afterwards and slapped this little monument on it that said, well, she may have been William Lawrence's wife, but she was Nathan Hale's girlfriend. Uh, that's pretty unusual. Nathan Hale, of course, America's first patriot, the person who uh, sacrificed his life uh, really to go behind enemy lines during the American Revolution on behalf of George Washington at the darkest hour of the American Revolution. 
Uh, Thomas Robbins was the founder of the Connecticut Historical Society, at least the first librarian of it, Reverend Thomas Robbins from Norfolk, Connecticut, and later a minister in South Windsor and later an antiquarian uh, book dealer and uh, a collector and uh, librarian. And he, this is also a monument by the Patterson firm. And then, uh, it's interesting, this is um, John Leffenwell. Usually people, when they talk about Hartford's old state house, think of Charles Bullfinch as the architect of it, but actually John Leffenwell, shown here, was the um, the uh, the builder, the master contractor, and probably the person who did the most to provide the detail and look of that building. Bullfinch may have had some overall plan for it, but there's no evidence that Bullfinch ever set foot in Hartford during the construction. It was really John Leffenwell's building. Uh, we're ending now at the earliest section of the Old North Cemetery, where uh, some of the very earliest gravestones you'll see here, uh, and uh, we'll end with uh, these two: uh, Aaron Chapin, Deacon Aaron Chapin, from died in 1838, and uh, he was a cabinet maker. He, and he was a member of the so-called Chapin Dynasty of furniture makers. Some of the furniture that these guys produced were brings uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the antiques market, and his son Liertes Chapin. Uh, who was also involved in that cabinet making firm, the last of the great Hartford cabinet makers who uh, died here and is buried here in 1847. Lots to learn, lots more to see. Only touched the uh, tip of the uh, uh, iceberg here, tip of the. Uh, and it's uh, uh, an extraordinary spot, a historic spot that deserves a lot of love and attention. Hope you'll visit Old North.